So hi, I'm happy to be here. My name is Ron Alfea. Today I will talk about a new feature in Python 3.11. The feature is called fine-grained error location in a traceback. So let me start with asking you guys a, a couple of basic questions just for me to get a feeling uh, of your like Python uh, uh, skills or usage. So how many of you write, let's say, more than 100 lines of Python code every month by show of hands? Okay, nice. Um, 300. Yeah. Okay, good. 3,000 per month. Per month, okay, per month. Oh, nice. Per, per I don't think I would say. You, you, do, you don't what? Yeah. No, it's a full Fifteen hundred per month. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. So nowadays we write a lot of Python code. Like it's no no longer a scripting language. In Python, especially if you, for example, I use Python for machine learning and deep learning. There is a huge ecosystem of uh, in Python for machine learning and deep learning, and um, there are huge code bases written in Python. And um, when those code bases become large, we need to start thinking about Python, or maybe we already think about Python, as a, a software, a, a tool to write big software that may be involving multiple developers on one project. So next, next slide will be with an example about a newly developed AR application. Um, okay, we have this code and I try to make it as big as possible. Let's please read it. It's a short example. Can everybody see it, by the way? Yeah, can you see? Okay, so this is the AR uh, application. We have the idea, is, it's just the main, the, the main model. The idea is we want to have two images, two persons. Uh, each one of them in a different place, in a different room. They each take their own picture and they send it to the AR application. The AR application takes th those people, produce an animation of, the, of those people, and then sits this application, plays this animation inside the conference room. It's like a, a type, typical use case for 2030 or something. And uh, now I run this code with Python 3.10. And I get an error. It's like I said, it's a newly developed application. I just finished writing this application and I run it and obviously when I run it for the first time, I'm getting, you know, an error. Yeah, so let's look at this error and we see that this error traces first to line 15. Um, on line 15, we see that we can't, we can't uh, broadcast um, tensors with shape uh, 224, and another one with shape that starts with 600. Now, that's, like, that's not, not enough 
at least for me to debug this application. Do you have an idea? What, what would you do at this point when you get an error? Like some of you are um, Python developers that write a lot of Python code. What do you do at this point, this typical point when you hit an error in Python? De debug the, yeah, okay. So we start with debugging the code. Like, do you use a debugger? You use the debugger. Yeah, you also use the debugger. Okay, nice. There are also another, okay, debugger is a good option. More options. Logging, yeah, logging, print statements. Oh, just, oh, logging. Okay, logging. Yeah, you can log. Uh, splitting to multiple lines, and then you know exactly which operation caused the error. Yeah. Okay, let's see what happens when we run the exact same code in Python 3.11. The, the, point, the, the point of this feature is to give more information when, uh, when you have an error, when the problem rises. So in Python 3.11, we see those markers and we see exactly where in the code we are the problem. I mean, that line, if you remember, okay, you can see that line and it's a, it's a bit complex line. You have six different tensors here. We have animated Alice and chair one, chair one, we multiply animated Alice by chair one. So chair one is probably a mask and we have two masks another mask for no chairs, and then we, we add all those uh, three uh, tensors together. Now the, the, the broadcast error, we could have it from either one of the multiplications or from either one of the uh, additions. And to debug it, without the markers, you had to put a either to put a breakpoint or to add login or to break it into multiple lines, but uh, here you get it re really fast. And the fact that you get it fast actually should save you development time because um, it's, it's part of the, the routine cycle of development. You know, we write, we test, we debug, and uh, Nowadays, Python code can be, can be pretty large. That was the idea, the motivation of why to use Python 3.11. The, the point of this feature is to save you time. We know that when we write, we are going to debug. There are going to be bugs, that's for sure. And you might not need to open the debugger or, or try or start any debug process if you have more information inside the traceback. And that was the motivation. And now I'll talk a bit about how, how it's implemented in Python. What was the changes they had to do in order to um, develop this feature? So th there are, there are, um, three ideas that we need to think of regarding Python. There is the Python compiler, is the first one. The Python compiler, it takes the source code of Python and compiles it into Python bytecode. Uh, an example for Python bytecode is on the right, we have a function, a simple function, and when compiled, it produces the following bytecode. So the bytecode is longer. And for every line of, uh, of, Py of Python source code, there, there are multiple bytecode lines. And we also keep as metadata the line number from the source code that uh, produce those, those bytecodes. Okay, so first idea is the Python compiler. Second idea is the call stack. So the call stack, in every program we have the call stack. The call stack is accumulating as we go and enter 
more and more functions inside the memory image of the program there is a stack and on the on top of the stack as part of the stack we keep the call stack we keep a trace of which function where we are located in the code which uh, cascading function lead to the current um, state of where we are at the code so that's that's the call function that's the um, call stack and now I would like to put them both together to explain basically how the Python traceback, the Python traceback that we get from free with every Python interpreter works. So the traceback, it uses both the line number from the bytecode and the call stack. It uses both of them to propagate the exception back to the back to the main model so for example here we see that an error occurred there was some kind of an exception zero division error in line nine in some module and this exception was not handled on the function level it was not handled so it propagates up the stack it propagates up to the other functions and because it was not handled in either of those functions and it leaves the main then we get we get the trace back the entire trace, trace back and we have also the lines using the metadata in uh, in uh, in the bytecode all of that was true for python 3.10 and in Python 3.11, we keep more metadata. So we want to know, we, we know that in a Python line, there can be multiple operations. There can be more, more than one operation. And it's not enough for us to know, I mean, it, to know just the, the line number that caused the error. Because in a single line, we can have a few different operations. We want to have a finer resolution. We want to know a fine-grained resolution. We want to know exactly where in the line did the error occur. That that's also should explain the name fine-grained error location. So within the line, in, in addition to the line number, we keep another two numbers, we keep the column. So we look at the, uh, through the code, we look at the line, and inside the line, we look at the column. And now we know exactly in the code where, where we are as we execute the bytecode. And if, if an, an error occurs, then we know exactly where inside the line, uh, what exactly the place, where the error happened. And it, it is true for the entire stack as we go up the, up the call stack, we know for every line where inside the line was the problem traced, traced to. Come again? The bytecode, the pricey part is bigger? Yeah. 10%. Okay, F first of all, it's true that they are bigger. So there, there is a price you need to pay for the extra information. Now we keep, so the Python bytecodes, they are stored in PyCache files. There are PyCache files. When you run Python, you, the, the script is automatically compiled into PyCache files. And in, this, in, in those files, you have the line number. And now you have another two numbers. You have to call them offset to offset. I don't know how much in percentage does it take. I think that it also depends on the usage, on the exact, um, on the types of, on, of, on the commands, on the lines that, that you wrote in your script. But you have an option to, if you are strict on memory or storage, you have an option to opt it out 
you can use a flag in Python 3.11 that opts out the, uh, ex the this meta new metadata, and then you don't need to pay the extra cost. Yes, we will have an example. Yes. So we have two examples. The first example is a very, very simple example. We have a, we, we are going to access a diction, most likely a dictionary, and we just see this line. So we are, we are trying to access uh, A and then B, C, D. We run it with Python 3.10. We get this error. Non-type object is not subscriptable. And we see only this line. And then when we run, run it with Python 3.11, we have those new markers. And we know that non-type object is not subscriptable. We know that the, the object, the non-type, the non-object is x at b at x, sorry, at a and then b. We know exactly where the error occurred. We know where it occurred inside the line. So now that we keep this extra extra information, um, this fine grade information throughout the line, we know we can trace back the exact location of where the the error occurred. So that's a, that's the first example, a basic a basic example. Second example, and the second example, we see how the markers propagate up through the call stack. Um, so we have an error over here at line nine, we have an error that happened also because of accessing uh, something that is none. But this function was not called from the main model, it was called from, uh, from, from some kind of a routine inside. So now, as it propagates back, back until the main, we know throughout the routines also where the error occurred. So I'm going to sum, to sum it up. The point of this feature, the motivation behind this feature is to help us debug faster. And because of debugging is an essential part of, of coding, so basically it helps us to code faster. We don't have to open the debug every time we have a bug. If it's a simple enough bug, we can debug it by, by ourselves. And if we have extra information, maybe more, more bugs are becoming simple enough to, uh, to debug them without checking the logs, breaking the lines, or opening a debugger. Um, yeah, so that's it. Questions? You said before that uh, this feature is not free, there are some costs. Uh, is there a performance cost? Um, I think the cost is mainly a memory cost. I mean, it's either memory or storage. Well, you disable the feature. Yeah. yeah. The flag is still using Python 3.11. Yeah, exactly. So you're still using Python 3.11, but you don't have to use this uh, this extra information. You can compile your code without this new metadata. If you are low on memory, then you can use flag. I don't recall its name, but you can find it in the docs and it will generate for you PyCache files without this information. Okay, yeah. Can we get this functionality in like V9 or something like that? <laughs> I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot.